Hey guys, welcome to another video tutorial about the game Summoner's War Sky Arena by Fan. And today I'm going to be covering what you should be buying in the glory shop. Now, just to go over this real fast for anyone who's new to the game, you can access the glory shop by pressing the shop button at the top uh, bottom right corner and then clicking the glory shop. So there's a ton of items here in the glory shop and I know that a lot of newcomers struggle with you know understanding which ones are the best and which ones you should be spending your very limited glory points on so I'm just gonna cover all the items really fast here and you know talk a little bit about each one and whether or not it is good for you and whether or not you should be buying it so let's start for the first item it's gonna be the unknown scroll and this is something that basically summons uh, fodder monsters. And what those are are one to two star monsters that you use to feed your other monsters in order to make them higher level. Now, needless to say, you should never spend your glory points on an unknown scroll. You're going to get a ton of these later on in the game, you know, probably more than you can ever use just um, as you're running dungeons and running various things in the Kairos dungeon. So don't spend your glory points on Unknown Scroll. Moving on, we have the other scrolls here. Mystical Scroll, Water Scroll, Fire Scroll, and Wind Scroll. Now, for these, I also recommend that you do not spend your glory points on. You can buy one a week, as you can see there, but, you know, I find it pretty easy to get Mystical Scrolls, and quite honestly, uh, if you're someone new and you want to roll for like a 4 star or a 5 star natural monster, the drop chances of that is actually very very low. Um, and most likely you're just going to end up getting like a 3 star monster with the mystical scroll. So I recommend you just focus on um, you know keeping whatever 3 star monsters you have and trying to upgrade those instead of using your glory points on mystical scrolls. I think you'll find that as you play the game you're going to come... Um, into access with a good amount of mystical scrolls just as you progress through the game through rewards and other stuff so there's really no need to be buying mystical scrolls with your glory points um, now for the elemental scrolls the same thing applies they're basically the exact same thing as the mystical scroll except you can uh, screen out two of the three elements now this might be worth it if you're running a mono element team which means you know all of your creatures are one element so you're you're taking advantage of like a leadership skill that only buffs one element for example in that case if you're really desperate and really want one more three star monster to join your mono element team then yeah you could buy one of these however in most other situations i would highly recommend that you do not spend your glory points on any of the scrolls so that covers the first section, which are all of these scrolls in the game, and now I'm going to go to the second section. The second section is Devilmons and Angelmons. Now, Devilmons are actually a very, very rare resource in this game. They can upgrade the skill level of a monster, of any monster in the game, by one. And, you know, the reason they're so valuable is because for many of the stronger monsters, the they only spawn as natural four star or five star so that means that their drop rates are four star and five star drop rates so it's very very hard to find duplicates of those monsters and in those situ in those situations pretty much the only way you can upgrade their skills is with devil mons um, so for that reason they're very very valuable and the only two ways i know of um, that you can get devil mons are through the glory shop and through a event that sometimes appears that's called Devilmon's Cove, I believe. Um, it basically just appears in the Kairos dungeon and you can kill it for one Devilmon. So if you're someone who's already has um, some very strong monsters, some naturally spawned four star or five star monsters, then I recommend that you know you can get Devilmons. Um, they're actually very, very good for you. Um, and if you're certain that you're going to be keeping those 4-star and 5-star monsters in your team for a very, very long time, then Devilmon is a good choice. 
However, if you only have 3 star monsters or if you have 4 star and 5 star monsters that were naturally 3 star monsters, so for example, if you upgraded your original water fairy into a 5 star water fairy, um, you shouldn't use a Devilmon to upgrade that because you can still upgrade that fairy with 3 star fairies and 2 star fairies because that's what they naturally spawn as and it's very very easy to get 3 star and 2 star spawns um, as com opposed to 4 star and 5 star spawns. So that's just a little bit about the Devilmon. Only get it if you have natural 4 or 5 star spawns that you're certain are going to be in your team for a long time. Now as for the random angel mons, I recommend that you never get this and that's just because it's actually very easy to find angel mons um, in the Kairos dungeon. You know, depending on which one you want, let's say I, I want the fire one, I would just run the hall of fire a bunch of times and then you know I would probably get like two angel mons on average uh, for every 50 or so energy that I spend. and. At the lower levels, they're going to be like level 5 Angel Mon, but you can just feed it fodder monsters um, and level it up to max level very, very quickly. So, you know, overall, it's very easy to get Angel Mons from the dungeon, so don't spend your glory points on them. Now, the next section I want to talk about is the resource production section, and it's these four buildings right here the Sanctum of Energy, which gives you energy max storage the mysterious plant which gives you energy production speed the fairy tree which gives you mana stone max storage and the mount mana fountain which uh, gives you mana stone production speed now out of these four there's actually a lot of math involved in determining which one is most efficient um, however I'm not gonna go over that math right now I'm just gonna give you the uh, you know TLDR version and basically what that is, is that the Mysterious Plant is generally the most efficient um, building in terms of all four resource buildings. And the Sanctum of Energy is second. So basically both the energy uh, related resource buildings are much more valuable than the Mana Stone related resource buildings. And that's just because in this game you can use uh, energy to get a lot of Mana Stones but you can't use mana stones to get energy. So, you know, for three energy, you can get up to like four to 5,000 uh, mana stones and as well as experience for your monsters, as well as like a dungeon drop if you're doing like a three-star secret dungeon. So that makes it much, much more efficient for you to be uh, prioritizing energy rather than mana. And this goes for many other cases as well. And basically, you know, if you're a fairly active player, if you have time to be, you know, playing maybe three or four times a day um, or more than that, then you should definitely prioritize Mysterious Plant first. This is the most important building for you and in general. Um, second, you should be maxing Sanctum of Energy. Uh, and then third, you can get the Mana Fountain. And fourth is Fairy Tree. Now, there's a special circumstance where if you're the type of player who maybe has a job and you're busy working all the time and you can only play the game like, you know, once or twice per day, just spend your energy once or twice per day. Now, in that situation, I would recommend you get the Sanctum of Energy first, followed by the Mysterious Plant second, and then the Fairy Tree third, followed by the Mana Fountain. Uh, and that's because, you know, if you only have time to play like, Two, two times a day, then you want your maximum amount of energy to be as high as possible uh, so so it can kind of you know stack up to the maximum amount and be there every time you're playing. And in order to do that, you have to upgrade the Sanctum of Energy over the Mysterious Plant. Um, after all, energy production speed is not going to be important to you if you're the type of player that can only play once or twice a day. So that about covers all of the resource production. Now I'm going to be moving on to the last and final section of the Glory Shop, which is basically all buildings um, that are related to your monster or your Arcane Tower's stats. So I call these these stat buildings. And basically there's a ton of stat buildings here, um, and you know I'm not going to click into each one. 
because there's just too many but you know you can click into each one and see what they do here um, as you can see there's an absolute ton of them and as far as these goes I'm gonna tell you what the most important ones are right now now basically the most important one is the sky tribe totem this is the one that increases your speed and speed is the most important attribute there is and this is especially true in arena in arena it is absolutely vital that you have some speed attribute um, it's by far the most important attribute out of all the existing ones um, so you should definitely focus on the speed uh, totem which is the sky tribe totem so definitely get this one first if you're focusing on arena or even in general I think speed is very very important so um, definitely make this one a priority once you start looking to build stat buildings now after you get your uh, speed building the sky tribe totem the next two stats that I would recommend you focus on are HP and attack and I consider these more or less equal so you can depend you know depending on what your team is and depending on what your preference is you can upgrade your HP or your attack now the building for HP is the crystal altar here HP plus two percent and the building for attack is the ancient sword which is the you know attack plus two percent now for these two buildings they apply to all of your monsters no matter what elements they are so after you get your sky tribe totem to a very high level you should begin upgrading these two stat buildings you can also keep in mind that there are some uh, sanctuaries here and basically what these sanctuaries do is you know they, they also upgrade your attack however the sanctuaries only focus on one element so you know if you're running a mono element team which means all four of your monsters are one element or even if you have like three of the same element and you're pretty sure you're gonna stick with that composition for a long time then you can upgrade the uh, various sanctuaries depending on which which one uh, your monsters elements are and the sanctuaries first level actually gives 3% attack compared to the ancient swords 2% so the sanctuary actually gives more I guess bang for your buck um, and that's only if you're running like a four or three monster team that has all of the same elements now after you upgrade your um, speed and attack and HP this is pretty much when you can uh, branch out and choose whatever you like the next two buildings that I think are good are the defense building which is the guard stone and the critical damage building which is the fallen ancient guardians oops sorry so critical damage so those two are on the lowest tier of stats basically um, and you should only be upgrading those after you get your speed to a very very high level and your attack and HP to very high levels as well and after you're done upgrading those obviously you can start focusing on your arcane towers with the arcane booster tower and there's one more for arcane towers which is the crystal rock which increases the arcane tower attack power um, so basically the arcane towers aren't really important you know they're only useful in defensive arena and you should be concentrating on those upgrades at the very very bottom um, so I'm just gonna go over your priorities one last time here in case you know anyone wanted a summary so first first and foremost the most important building is sky tribe totem for speed second is a tie in my mind between attack and HP and those are crystal art altar for HP and ancient sword for attack and also the sanctuaries if you're running a mono uh, you know element team now after you get your speed attack and HP go ahead and go for defense and crit damage um, and after that go for arcane tower so that's pretty much the summary of the stat buildings um, in terms of how good they are and what your priorities should be and you know that's pretty much it those are all the buildings in the glory shop um, at the time that I'm making this video 
if there's more added I will probably update the video and if you guys like the video please feel free to comment and subscribe because I will be making quite a bit more of these videos filled with uh, tutorials guides tips and tricks about you know getting better in the game Summoner's War and I'm probably also going to be posting some gameplay videos um, as I progress through the game. Currently I am level 26 and um, I am a completely free to play player that's been playing for around two to three months. So thanks for watching guys and until next time.